good afternoon everyone so we'll be starting the first session of the ne 2024 with respect to the chapter electromagnetic induction right so in this uh, session we'll be discussing the electromagnetic inductions and we will be discussing some of the important questions as well as uh, py2s of ne 2024 right so uh, we'll be beginning uh, with the question number 1 uh, the question number 1 uh, says that a transformer has an efficiency of 80% and works at 10 volt and 4 kilowatt right if the secondary voltage is 240 volts uh, then the current in the secondary coil is right so we know that in transformer we have two coils right we have two coils one we call as the primary coil right and the second we call as secondary coil right secondary coil this is the primary coil and this is the secondary coil right so because of the change in the magnetic field in the primary coil for an ac current there is an induced emf in the secondary coil right there is an induced emf in the secondary coil right now let's suppose uh, v1 is the voltage across the primary coil and v2 is the voltage across secondary coil or we can say vp is the voltage across primary and vs is the voltage across secondary right then in that case uh, v2 upon v1 or we can write it as potential drop across secondary upon the potential drop across primary depends upon the number of is equal to number of turns in the secondary divided by the number of turns in the primary coil right now ns is the number of turns in secondary coil and np is the number of turns in primary coil right so v2 upon v1 will be uh, equal to vs upon vp and we know for an ideal transformer whatever is the input power supplied by the secondary same will be the output across the Uh, whatever is the input power supplied with the primary same will be the output across the secondary coil right so that's the condition for the ideal transformer right that's the condition for ideal transformer and similarly if we have to calculate the ratio of the current the current ratio between uh, across secondary coil or the primary coil will be so current across secondary upon the current across primary will be equal to number of turns in primary divided by the number of turns in the secondary coil right so this is the ratio uh, for the current right this is the ratio for the current because whatever is the power supplied whatever is the power supplied by the secondary by the primary same will be the output power across the primary for the ideal transformer right now the condition is that if the transformer is not ideal right if the transformer is not ideal and we know that practically a no transformer is an ideal transformer right there is always some loss right Uh, to the input energy or to the input supply right there is always some loss then in that condition we uh, rely on the efficiency of that transformer right we rely on the efficiency of that transformer so efficiency of the transformer will be defined as whatever is the output power out of the input power right to multiplied by the 100 this will give us the percentage efficiency right this will give us the percentage efficiency right the percentage efficiency is nothing it's the output power divided by the input power multiplied by the 100 right so this is the case where the transformer is not an ideal it's non ideal transformer right non ideal case right in non ideal case there is uh, we always talk about the efficiency of transformer right but in case of ideal transformer whatever is the input power supply is same with the output power supply across the secondary right so in this question number 1 a transformer has an efficiency of 80% right the transformer has an efficiency of 80% right it means that it means that output upon input power multiplied by 100 has to be equal to 80 right it has to be equal to 80 or we can write p output upon p input it has to be equal to 0.8 right so this will be the efficiency right now input supply transfer works transformer works uh, for the input supply ideally speaking at 4 kilowatt right 4 kilowatt right so 4 kilowatt is the input supply right 4 kilowatt is the input supply 4 kilowatt is the input supply and output will be nothing what is the current flowing through the output uh, secondary coil multiplied by the voltage across the secondary coil so v output will be nothing v s multiplied by i is and input power is 4 kilowatt right 4 kilowatt 
we can write it as 4 into 10 to the power 3. That will be equal to 0 0.8. Now, the voltage across the secondary coil is given as 240 volts, right? 240 volts is the voltage across the secondary. So, we can write it as 240 upon 4 into 10 to the power 3 multiplied by Is. That will be equal to 0 0.8, right? 0 0.8. So, from here, so it will be uh, 4 into 6, right? So, it has to be equal to uh, 6 into 10 to the power minus 2, right? That will multiplied by Is. That will be equal to 0 0.8, right? 0 0.8. Or we can write here, uh, Is will be equal to uh, 0 0.8 upon uh, 6 into 10 to the power minus 2. Or that will be 80 upon 6, right? 80 upon 6 or we can write it as 40 upon 3 as well, right? 40 upon 3. So this much of current will be flowing. This much amperes of the current will be flowing through the secondary coil, right? When the efficiency of this transformer is given as 80%, it means that output power upon the input power is equal to 0.8 or 80%, right? So this is the case of a non-ideal transformer. If the transformer is ideal, then in that case, we can write, we can use these two equations to calculate the voltage across secondary or primary or current across secondary or primary or a relation uh, between the current and the number of turns, uh, number of turns in the primary and the secondary coil. So this, uh, these two relations we can uh, use in that case, right? Right. So uh, if the transformer is non-ideal, we'll be using the concept of the efficiency, right? Now let's move on to the next question, right? The question number two. The question number two is that a coil is placed perpendicular to a magnetic field of 5,000 tesla when the field is changed to 3,000 tesla in two seconds and induced emf of 22 volt is produced in the coil. If the diameter of the coil is 0.02 meter, then the number of turns in the coil is. And we know that EMF induced is nothing. EMF induced is nothing. Uh, this is equal to minus T5 over TT, right? It's the rate of change of flux with respect to the time and with this negative sign. And this negative sign actually gives us the direction of the induced current, right? Or induced EMF, right? So uh, now talking about uh, this question, it's given that the uh, Coil is placed perpendicular to a magnetic field, right? And the flex linked uh, through any uh, uh, flex linked to uh, through any surface for a uniform field that's equal to p dot a, right? P dot a that's equal to phi. That's the flex link through a surface, right? Flex through a given surface, right? Now you can see here initially the uh, it's given that the coil is perpendicular to a magnetic field. It means that the area vector will be along the direction of the magnetic field vector, or we can say phi will be nothing. It will be B multiplied by A, right? B multiplied by A. So initially, the magnetic field is 5,000 Tesla, right? It is 5,000 Tesla. We can write it as 5 to 10 to the power 3, and multiplied by this area, that's equal to uh, 0 0.02, right? 0. Point, uh, the diameter is given as 0. 0.02 meter, or we can write its area as pi d square upon 4, right? Pi d square upon 4, that will be equal to 5 into 10 to the power 3, right? Multiplied by pi upon 4, and uh, 0. 0.02 whole square, it will be 2 into 10 to the power minus 4, right? So from here, 2 and 2 will get cancelled, right? We'll be left with, uh, it has to be uh, 10 to the power minus 1 upon 2, right? So, 0 0.5 pi upon 2, right? So, this much will be the, this much will be the, actually the initial uh, flux, right? This will be the initial flux, right? Now, the question is that uh, this, uh, now this flux has actually changed, right? Let's check the calculation here first. So it's 5 into 10 to the power 3, right? It will be uh, 10 to the power minus 1, right? So, it has to be 0 0.5 pi upon 2, right? So this is the phi one here, right? Now the final flux is nothing. Final flux is nothing because the magnetic field has changed, right? Phi two will be nothing. It will be three thousand multiplied by multiplied by uh, area, right? Area is once again pi d square. That will be pi multiplied by pi multiplied by upon four. That will be two into ten to the power minus four, right? Once again. So this and this will get cancelled, right? So it has to be 0 0.35 upon 2, right? So this will be the magnetic field. This will be the magnetic flex after a time t equal to delta t equal to 2 seconds, right? 2 seconds. Now we have to find the number of turns, right? Let's suppose there are n number of turns. And uh, if there are n number of turns, then we can write induced EMF will be nothing. It will be 
delta phi upon delta t talking about the magnitude only right if there are n number of turns let's suppose n number of turns are there so it will be a change in flux that is 0 0.5 pi upon 2 minus 0 0.3 pi upon 2 right so uh, divided with the time that is uh, equal to 2 seconds right that's equal to 2 seconds right and it's given that uh, induced emf is 22 volts right that's 22 volts it will be n multiplied by uh, it will be 0 0.1 pi right upon 0 0.1 pi right it will be 0 0.1 pi it has to be 0 0.1 pi upon 2 right upon 2 so from here n will be nothing it will be 44 upon 0 0.1 pi right or we can write it as 440 upon pi right so this much of uh, this much uh, will be the number of turns in this uh, for this question right uh, so the coil will have n equal to 440 upon pi right these number of turns will be there in the coil right now let's move on to the another question it's a very important question with respect to the tip, uh, whole of the electromagnetism right uh, this question was asked in your uh, previous year uh, exams as well right it was asked in uh, uh, in your uh, different competitive exams be it jw be it neat right it's a very expected questions right very ex very much expected questions let's discuss this match the list first right now it states that there are two columns list one and list two right in the list two we have been given the names of certain laws and we have to find the equations with respect to the given certain laws right First law is that the cost of magnetostatics. So cost of magnetostatics, nothing. That is the magnetic flux through a closed surface is always equal to zero, right? Magnetic flux through a closed surface is always equal to zero. It means that the magnetic monopole does not exist, right? Monopoles never exist. Magnetic mo monopole does not exist. It means that uh, the correct, uh, correct equation for the part A will be equation second, right? The integral of B dot DA will be equal to zero. Similarly, Faraday's law of electromagnetic induction. So Faraday law says that EMF induced is nothing. It is actually uh, minus d phi over dt. Let's try to write this equation. We can write this uh, EMF as integral of E dot dl, right? Integral of E dot dl, right? That will be equal to minus t upon dt. And now phi, we can write it as uh, p, uh, we can write phi as, uh, we can write phi as uh, it has to be integral of p dot d right integral of p dot d so this uh, this is how we can write the uh, gauss law in the integral form right Go, uh, sorry ampere uh, faraday's law in the integral form right so this is the faraday's law in the differential form and this is the same faraday's law in the integral form the correct equation for the faraday's law is the part third, right so this is the correct representation of the faraday's law similarly for ampere's law ampere's law is nothing the magnetic field through a closed line is always equal to mu naught and the current enclosed by that closed line right so the correct equation will be equation number four and for gauss law of electrostatics we know that integral of e dot ds it means the electrostatic flux through a closed surface is always equal to charge enclosed upon the epsilon naught right and the total charge uh, in a given volume is nothing we can integrate the volume charge density with respect to the volume right to calculate the uh, what we call as uh, to calculate the total charge, right? The correct equation is that uh, equation number first is the correct. So the correct match will be like this. So this is the correct match, right? So this is how we can actually uh, solve this equation or find out the integral forms of different equations, right? These are the mathematical equations for different laws of electromagnetism, right? Now let's move on to the another question, right? The question is that a rectangular loop of length 2.5 meter and width 2 meter is placed at 60 degree to a magnetic field of 4 tesla. The loop is removed from the uh, field in 10 seconds. The average EMF induced in the loop during this time is. It means that uh, once uh, there was certain flux associated with the loop, so suddenly the loop was uh, removed from the field. It means that the flux now has changed, right? So the magnetic flux has now changed. So if the magnetic flux has changed, there will be some induced EMF, right? And this induced EMF will be nothing. Induced EMF uh, E will be equal to, uh, if we talk about the average induced EMF, it will be delta phi upon delta T. Now, change in flux we have to calculate. It will be final flux minus initial flux, right? Uh, final flux minus initial flux. So final flux is nothing. When it is removed from the field, the final flux through this loop will be equal to zero, right? Initial flux will be nothing. It has to be equal to P dot T, right? P dot uh, A, right? P dot A for a uniform field, right? So it will be BA cos theta, we can write it as BA cos of 60 degree here, right? 
Now the magnetic field is given as four Tesla and area is given as uh, uh, that will be width multiplied by the length. That's two into two point five. That will be equal to uh, five meter per uh, five meter square and cos sixty to be one upon two. That will be equal to ten, right? That will be equal to ten, right? So ten Weber will be the flux here, right? Ten Weber will be the uh, change. Um, flux here right initial flux now the change in flux will be nothing it will be minus 10 weber right so this will be the change in flux so the induced emf will be nothing it will be minus uh five uh, minus delta phi that will be minus 10 upon delta t in the time 10 seconds so we'll divide it by 10 it will be equal to plus one volt so this much will be the induced emf in this case right plus one volt will be the induced emf right now let's move on to the another question 12 volt battery connected to a we have some uh, inductor, right? We have a coil here, right? And there is some battery connected to it, which is given as 12 volts, right? Now, let's suppose the coefficient of self-inductance is given as uh, L, right? That's L, right? The resistance uh, of this coil is given as uh, XL is given as 6 ohm, right? That's given as 6 ohm. It drives a constant current in the circuit. The switch is opened in 1 milliseconds, right? Uh, the EMF induced across the coil is 20 volt, right? And we know that EMF induced will be nothing. It will be equal to minus L D I by D T, right? In an inductor, right? Minus L D I by D T, right? Now the question is that uh, we have to calculate. We have to calculate. Uh, it's given that the EMF induced is twenty volts, and there is a constant current flowing through the circuit, right? So if EMF induced is uh, twenty volts, right? There is some uh, for momentarily some constant current. We are assuming some constant current flowing through the circuit, right? Let's suppose uh, initially there uh, is no current and after some time there is some current, right? And we have to calculate that change in current. If we find that delta I, it will be nothing. It will be the EMF induced upon the resistance. So the EMF induced is 20 volts upon the resistance. It will be 20 upon uh, 6 MPS will be the current through the circuit, right? Now we can uh, uh, look at this equation, right? Looking at this equation, the EMF induced is 20, right? 20 volts, right? Now the coefficient of self-inductance is L, delta I is 20 upon 6 multiplied by the delta T, that's given as 1 milliseconds. We can write it as 10 to the power minus 3, right? So from here, uh, from here, the value of L comes out to be 6 into 10 to the power. Uh, so it has to be 6 into 10 to the power 3 and 3, right? So this much will be the uh, 10 to the power minus 3 and 3, right? 10 to the power minus 3 and 3, right? So this much will be the coefficient of self-inductance for this coil, right? Now let's move on to the question number five. The question number five is that an EMF of 0 0.08 volt is induced in a metal rod of length L, right? Uh, given as 10 centimeters held normal to a magnetic field of 0 0.4 Tesla. Now we have to find the velocity with which actually the rod is moving. So it's a case of motional EMF, right? Whenever a rod moves perpendicular to the magnetic field, right? Perpendicular to the magnetic field, and uh, velocity is perpendicular to the magnetic field here also, right? And velocity uh, vector is also perpendicular to the length of this uh, length of this rod, right? Let's suppose V is the length of this rod, right? We know the induced EMF is nothing. It's given as integral of uh, V cross V dot DL, right? V cross V dot DL. So for this rod, going with some uniform velocity, the induced EMF will be equal to BVL, right? So this is the amount of uh, induced EMF, right? Now it's given that for this rod, the induced EMF is uh, 0 0.08 volt, right? So we can write it as 0 0.08, that will be equal to BVL. Now the magnetic field is 0 0.4 Tesla, velocity we have to calculate, the length of this rod is 0 0.1. So the velocity has to be equal to uh, 0 0.08 upon 0 0.04, right? That will be equal to 2 meter per second. So its velocity is equal to 2 meter per second in a given magnetic field, right? So this was the question about the motional EMF, right? Now talking about the question number 6. The question number 6 is with respect to uh, whenever uh, we, uh, it's once again the most concept of the motional EMF, a metallic rod. We have a metallic rod, right? We have the metallic rod like this. And this metallic rod is moving in a magnetic field within uh, rotating in a magnetic field with an angular velocity of omega right so the omega normal to a uniform magnetic field b about an axis passing through one end of the rod as shown in the figure the induced emf is right once again the induced emf will be nothing we'll be using this equation integral of v cross p dot dl right v cross p uh, dot dl right 
Now in this case, in this case, since magnetic velocity vector is perpendicular to the magnetic field, right? That means V cross B will be nothing. It will be VB and it will be along the direction of this DL vector. So it means that we can write it as integral of uh, VB DL, right? VB DL. This will be the integration right here. Now you can see here, whenever a rod rotates, that each and every point on this rod will have the same angular velocity, but it uh, each and every point on this rod will have different uh, tangential speeds, right? because of their different circumferences in the circle, right? So let's suppose if we take the elemental element of this rod, that's dx element, right? dx element uh, at a distance of x from this axis, right? Uh, the velocity of this uh, dx element will be nothing. It will be equal to v is equal to x omega, right? v is equal to x omega, right? Now, magnetic field is v, right? We can integrate, uh, we can find this uh, EMF induced between the two ends of this ro rod that v is equal to x omega, b into dx right now if we integrate this equation b omega x dx with the proper limits right right with the proper limits we'll get the potential difference of the induced emf across the two points right so let's suppose we have to find the induced emf between the two points uh, a and b here right a and b so we'll take a limit between a and b so here uh, this is the chosen reference uh, this is the reference we have chosen here right so it means that we'll take this position as zero and this position as uh, equal to the length of this rod. So we'll integrate it from, we'll integrate it from, uh, we'll integrate it from zero to L, right? Zero to L. So we'll have uh, B is constant, omega is constant, constant integration of X is nothing. X square upon two, we'll have L square upon two here, right? So L square upon two here. So induced EMF across the two ends of this rod is half B omega L square, right? Half B omega L square. Now, if we have to find the magnetic, if we have to find the induced EMF between the center of the rod and one of its ends, right? Between the center of the rod and the end B, right? Then we will integrate it from point C to point B. Then at that time, the induced EMF between these two points will be integral of with the proper limit. Uh, now here the, uh, here the position of this point is L by two from this axis. And this point is once again at a, uh, at a distance of L. So we'll be taking the limit from L by two to L, right? In that case, that will be B omega X dx. So we'll have uh, B omega X square upon two, right? X square upon two, but with the limits L by two to uh, L, right? So we'll have a B omega upon two L square minus L square upon four, right? So it will be equal to uh, three uh, B omega L square upon eight, right? So this will be the induced EMF, uh, induced EMF between point C and B, right? Between the point C and B. So this is, uh, we have to just change the limits uh, between any two points to calculate the induced EMF for this question, right? Now let's uh, move on to the another question. So it's a very similar question uh, to the previous question, right? With the given data, a metallic conductor of length one meter, right? It's given that we have a metallic conductor uh, it's given that we have a metallic conductor of length one meter rotates in a vertical plane, right? It rotates in a vertical plane parallel to east-west direction about one of its end with angular velocity omega. Omega is given as uh, 5 radians per second, right? 5 radians per second. If the horizontal component of Earth's magnetic field is given as, horizontal component of Earth's magnetic field is given as 0 0.2 multiplied by 10 to the power minus 4 Tesla, right? Then EMF induced between two ends of the conductor is. So EMF induced between the two ends of the conductor will be nothing. It will be half P omega L square, right? That we calculated in the previous question, right? Now the value of P is given as 0 0.2 into 10 to the power minus 4 Tesla, right? Omega is 5 radians and length of this rod is 1 meter. So it will be 1 square. So from here, uh, it will be 0 0.1, right? Or we can write it as uh, 5 into 10 to the power minus 5 volts, right? So this much will be the induced EMF across the ends of this uh, rod, right? Now, uh, talking about the question number uh, 8, right? This is the question number 8. We'll move on to the question number 8 here, right? So for the question number 8, uh, we have been given the magnetic flux. The magnetic flux through a coil perpendicular to its plane is varying according to the relation, right? So, uh, right. Phi or the flux is given as a function of time. That's 5t cube plus 4t square plus 2t minus 5, right? Plus 2t minus 5. So this is the flux uh, 
through the coil uh, as a function of time, right? Through the coil as a function of time, right? This much is the flux. If the resistance of the coil is 5 ohm, it's given that the resistance of the coil is 5 ohm, right? The resistance of the coil is 5 ohm, right? Then the induced current through the coil at t equal to 2 second is, right? We have to find the induced current through the coil at time t equal to 2 seconds, right? At time t equal to 2 seconds, right? Now, induced current will be nothing. Induced current will be nothing. It will be induced EMF upon the resistance. That will give us the induced current, right? So, we will be first of all finding the induced EMF. That will be E is equal to minus T5 over TT, right? Minus T5 over TT, right? So, minus T over TT of. Now, we have to substitute the value of phi here. That is uh, 5T cube plus 4T square plus 2T minus 5, right? We'll differentiate it with respect to time. It will be a minus, uh, it has to be a 15 t square, right? 15 t square, right? Plus 8 t plus 2, right? So this will be the EMF as a function of time, right? We, we can substitute the value of uh, time t here, right? Time t equal to 2 seconds, right? Now we can, uh, if we talk about the magnitude of the EMF only, right? I forget about the direction, we can write it as 5 into 2 square plus 8 into 2 plus 2, right? So it will be actually uh, 4 into 15 will be 60, right? 60 plus 16 plus uh, 2, that will be equal to 78 volts, right? So this is the induced EMF, right? So the current uh, here will be nothing, it will be 78 upon the resistance. The resistance is given as 5 ohm. So this much MPS will be the current through the uh, coil, right? So this will be the current through the coil. Now, if we have to find the charge flow, right? If we have to find the charge flow, total charge flow, right? We know that current is nothing. We can write this current as TQ or TT, right? TQ or TT. We can also write it as uh, 1 upon R T5 over TT, right? T5 over TT. So this will give us actually the total charge flow, right? So from here, uh, the total charge flow will be nothing uh, if it integrated on both sides it will be delta q that's the total amount of the charge flow uh, one upon r uh, delta phi right so the change in flux upon the resistance actually gives us the total charge flow right it gives us actually the total charge flow right total charge flow it's a very important equation very important equation for your upcoming exam right so whenever in a given um, in a given circuit if there is a flux varying flux right if we have to calculate the total charge flow in, in a given time we have to find the uh, change in flux between the two time intervals right divided by the resistance will actually as give will actually give us the total charge flow to the circuit right now let's move on to the another question a constant magnetic field of one tesla is applied a constant magnetic field of one tesla is applied in the region x greater than zero. A metallic circular ring of radius one meter is moving with a constant velocity of one meter per second along the axis at time t equal to zero second. The center of uh, O of the ring, the center O of the ring actually is at x equal to minus one meter. What will be the value of the induced EM in the ring at time t equal to one second, right? Now it means that once at time t equal to zero, x uh, o uh, center of the ring is at a distance of uh, minus one meter. It means that this ring is has not entered the magnetic field yet, right? The ring has not entered the magnetic field yet. It is just touching the region where the magnetic field is present, right? Once the ring enters the magnetic field, because uh, once in first second in t equal to one second, the center o will travel a distance of uh, one meter right so the center of this circle will actually lie on this boundary right and at that time there will be half of the circle which which will actually lie within this magnetic field region right so uh, the change in flux in that case will be nothing uh, or we can uh, we can simply say that we can simply say that uh, it is like uh, the rod is moving rod is moving along this direction and, and it enters this magnetic field region right it enters in this magnetic field region and whatever be the velocity of this uh, velocity of this uh, circular ring uh, is of same will be the velocity of this rod along this direction velocity right along this direction this will be the velocity vector right so it means that uh, it means that uh, it will be we can uh, do this solve this question uh, or assuming it to be a case of emotional emf as well right assuming it will be a case of emotional emf right assuming it to be a case of emotional emf right so uh, 
So it will be a case of motional EMF as well, right? We can solve it by both the methods. So in that case, the EMF induced will be BVL, right? So B is the magnetic field, V is the velocity, right? L is the length uh, of this rod from point A to point B, right? So induced EMF will be equal to B. B is the magnetic field that's given as one Tesla and the velocity is given as one meter per second, right? That's given as one meter per second and the uh, length of this rod is given as, uh, uh, that will be equal to twice the radius, right? That will be equal to twice the radius. The radius of the ring is given as one meter. So it will be actually two volts, right? So the induced EMF here will be nothing. That will be equal to two volts. So induced EMF will be equal to two volts. So we'll be discussing the next question here. The self-induced EMF of a coil is 25 volts, right? When the current in it is changed at uniform rate from 10 ampere to uh, 10 ampere to uh, 25 ampere in one second, the change in the energy of the inductance is right. So it's simply a very simple question, right? Uh, the solution for this question will be uh, the self-induced EMF of a coil is 25 volts, right? So EMF is given as 25 volts, right? And uh, the current change delta I is given as uh, that will be final current minus initial current that is 25 minus 10 that will be equal to uh, 15 amperes and the time delta t is given as one second right we have to find the uh, change in energy we know that energy stored in an inductor is nothing it's equal to half li square right half li square that will be equal to half uh, whatever be the final current square minus initial current square right now final current uh, the, the we have to find the change in energy right uh, change in energy. The inductance of this inductor is given as, uh, uh, which is not given here, right? We can find that also, right? So final square minus initial square, that will be equal to 25 square minus 10 square, right? So it will be half L, 25 square is 625 minus 100, right? That will be equal to 525 upon 2 multiplied by L, right? And we have to calculate the value of this L. We can write, since the induced EMF is given as 25 volts, we can write it as L delta I by delta T, right? Right? Now, uh, the value of L will be nothing. The 25 multiplied by the delta T, that's given as 1. Second upon the delta I, that's given as 15, right? So it will be actually 5 upon 3. Now, we can substitute the value of uh, L here in this equation. That's 5 upon 3 to calculate the change in energy of the inductance, right? So that's it with respect to the electromagnetic inductions. These are some of the expected questions or expected areas that will be asked in your upcoming NEET exams, right? So in the next lecture, uh, we'll be starting with the electro, we'll be starting with the alternating current, AC current, and uh, we'll be discussing once again the same, uh, in the same way, the previous year question and the most important questions with respect to your alternating current, right? So that will be done in the next lecture. Till then, take care and goodbye.